<clears throat> Hello. What I'm going to do in this tutorial is demonstrate how to make a recruitable workshop NPC. So, first thing I'm going to want to do is create an NPC. So, I'm going to right click New, and I'm going to make him uh, fairly generic. I'm not going to bother editing him at all. So, I'm just going to give him uh, a unique ID here. So, I'll call him Tutorial Workshop NPC, and I'll give him the name workshop npc then i won't bother giving him a short name and i'm going to select unique and now we're going to be wanting to attach a script to him here but we um but we can't do that until um we've okayed out and come back in so i'm going to go okay and filter for him here tutorial workshop npc so now we're going to be adding a script here and we're going to want to look for uh, workshop npc script so I, I'm doing it by leaving that large thing in, because sometimes if you delete the whole thing when you've got something in your filter, it'll all freeze up. So I just left that in my filter and then deleted it like that. So there are three things that we're definitely going to want to check. Commandable, allow caravan, allow move. And all the rest of these are fairly self-explanatory. Um, we're just going to make him basically a generic settler. He won't do anything special. He won't be a special vendor. Um, he All he will be able to do is the Spog standard stuff. So now for workshop parent, we're just going to double click that. And we're just going to auth click autofill. And it will autofill to workshop parent, which is correct. If you want to fiddle around with any of these, they are pretty self-explanatory based on the documentation strings. But I'm just going to leave mine as just generic. He does the very bare bones of a workshop NPC. And now we're going to want to add him to the workshop faction as well. Um, yeah. And we're going to want to make sure he's at rank minus one. Now this can be a little bit fiddly to set up. Okay, I just had to check that I was, that was doing that right because sometimes changing the rank can be a little bit fiddly. But basically I just kind of clicked over here until, um, until it came up and let me edit it. And I just typed in minus one. So that means he's not currently in the faction but will be added to the faction later on. And that's all we really need to do for our NPC. So I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to save. And I'm using my uh, interior tutorial test file. So I'm going to just piggyback myself onto a quest that I made earlier. Um, which I call tutorial music quest. But um, I'm going to presume you already have a quest in mind. So obviously you'd want to right click new and set it up. But I'm going to do some changing in my quest data tab anyway. So all these are already fine, and we're going to set it at quite a low priority, so we're going to set it priority 5. And we're doing this because we want the workshop dialogue to take precedence over any dialogue that we create in here. So by giving it a low priority, it will just um, automatically, once he is in the workshop faction, he then has access to the workshop dialogue, which has a higher priority, so that will override any dialogue we create here. So we're going to want to create a new alias to point to our NPC, so I'm going to right click New Efforts Alias. And I'm going to call it um, Tute Workshop N NPC. And we're going to go for Unique Actor and we're going to select our NPC here. And uh, the reason he's coming up in here is because I checked Unique in the box when I was editing him. I can't remember if I commented that at all. But if he, do if he doesn't come up here, make sure you go back in and select Unique in the, uh, the um, AI data on the side on the uh, the left hand side. So I'm going to hit OK with that and I'm going to OK out and save. I always save after every tiny little thing I do because the creation kit has a horrible habit of, uh, of crashing on me. So now I'm going to want to create a scene. So I'm going to right click new and I'll just call it um, shoot, workshop npc scene 01 like that. And I'm just going to give it an index of 1. I mean, the index doesn't matter. It's mainly just to keep things in order. So now we're going to want to do... We'll hit Player Dialogue so this start phase comes up. Right click, New Actor, select our NPC. And this is going to show up this start greeting thing. And so now we're going to double click at it here. And if you've never created a greeting before within your quest, this is going to come up. So I'm just going to stick greetings on the end of the name of my quest. Like that. And this is going to bring up our greeting. So I'm just going to say, hello, how are you? Just anything at all. And now we're going to condition it so that only our NPC can say it. So we're going to want to right click new in here. Get his ID will already come up. And we're going to want to search for our NPC. Um, 
Very good. Show your works for NPC. Okay. 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 I'm going to actually go back in and requires player activation, which is just a preference of mine. Okay. And now we're going to add a phase at end. And we're going to right click, new action, player dialog like this. And I'm just going to OK out of this so I get into this with all my positive and negative responses. Now again, I'm assuming that if you're following this tutorial, you probably already know a fair bit about dialogue. So I'm going to do the bare minimum. I'm just going to set up one single uh, topic. So I'm going to do a positive response. So the player can say, do you want to come and work with me? And that's the prompt. So now I'm going to put the actual subtitles. Do you want to come and work with me? And I'm going to hit OK, OK. I'm just going to OK out of all this and save. So now I'm going to create a whole new scene and I'm doing this because you might have a longer scene that you want to run without this getting in the way. So I'm going to right click new and just call it shoot workshop NPC scene 02. And I'm just going to give it an index of 2, just to keep it in the order. And it has uh, gone higher up because I've made a typo in it. But um, next we're going to want to uh, right click, new actor, select our actor, right click, add phase at end. And now we're going to do new action, dialogue. And I'm going to have, this is what the NPC will say when you say that topic that we put in earlier. Because I'm doing things slightly differently. I'm creating a whole new scene to keep it out of the way of the main scene. That sounds great. Where did you have in mind? Okay, okay, and we're going to name this scene now, this phase, and this is going to be used later. So I'm just going to call it Recruit Phase, like that. So now we're going to be right click, adding a phase at end. And what we're going to want to do in here is we're going to add a quick action. We're going to add a timer action here with max seconds 1. And the reason we're doing this is because we're now going to run a script up here and we don't want the scene to move on without um, without it having run the script. So I'm now going to double click up here and we're going to want to run a fragment. So we're going to want to now create a property and we're going to want to create two different properties. First off we're going to want to create a quest property and everything has gone and disappeared in the behind here. So I'm going to add a property, quest, and now we're going to point this over to workshop parent. And this will auto fill because we gave it the same name. And now the second property we're going to want to add is going to be a reference alias property. And we're going to want to point this over to the alias that is pointing to our NPC. So I called it um, tutorial, I call it tut workshop NPC. So I'm just going to put alias underscore shoot workshop npc and this alias underscore is a prefix just basically for visual purposes to prompt ourselves that it is an alias and the creation kit recognizes this so it will um, auto fill anyway there we go alias underscore tutorial works for npc is pointing to the alias tutorial works for npc in our quest okay so now what we're going to do is run a fragment which I have conveniently already prepared here. So I'll copy this over and paste it in. So workshop parent is the workshop parent quest. We're calling on the workshop parent quest script within workshop parent. And this add permanent actor to workshop player choice thing is already something within um, the workshop parent script. So you have to worry about that. And remember, this is the alias we created. And because we can't call this function on an alias, we have to call it on the actor reference. So we just add dot get actor ref at the end. And so if we compile it, nothing should happen, which means it's fine. And we're going to hit OK, and that little PE thing will show up there. So we're going to right click, add phase at end, and now we'll have the NPC just say something. So new, um, that's great. I'll head there now. OK. OK, OK, and that will just automatically end. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to link this scene to the scene that we prepared earlier. So this, do you want to come and work with me? We're going to enter in again, and we're going to select scene 02, 
and the recruit phase has automatically filled in for us. So okay, so now basically the player will say, do you want to come work with me? And the tutorial workshop NPC is going to do his bit. I'm just going to add one little extra thing here. I'm going to add a package because I find often when you travel from um, scene to scene, the NPC is going to start walking away. Now ours won't do that because he doesn't have any packages at all. But just to, if yours does have any packages, he may start trying to process them when you change to a different scene. So to stop that happening, we're looking for default stay at self scene. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to drag that out for the course of the whole scene like that. So now, it's just basically a fail safe. Like, I usually add this to every scene I make, just in case the NPC starts buggering off somewhere and it's going to mess up the whole scene. So that should be everything that you need to do. I'm now going to go into the game and... Oh, wait, I'm actually going to... I'll place the NPC in world off camera, because you don't need to see that happening. But then I'm going to go um, and uh, demonstrate that working. Okay, so I'm here in Abernathy Farm where I placed my NPC, and I did make one slight change. The scene which contained the script where you actually, uh, where he says, um, that sounds like a great idea, I'll head there now. I checked the um, pl player dialogue uh, checkbox, and a little blank greeting box appeared in the corner. And the reason I did that is that if you don't do that, then it will, the dialogue camera will just cut off abruptly when there's no player dialogue, and we don't want that to happen. Uh, I forgot about that until uh, until uh, until too late. So let's speak to him. Hello, how are you? Do you want to come and work with me? That sounds great. Where did you have in mind? And now we can select somewhere. So I'm going to select Abernathy Farm because that's where we are. But um, sometimes it can take a long time for the NPC to show up at your settlement. I've had that experience in the past. So if if you know he takes a long time, do wait around till he'll show up eventually. So I send him to Abernathy Farm, and right away he should start now sandboxing because he will have been he will have inherited all the various uh, properties of an NPC script. There we are. He's off sandboxing, and we can now assign him to things. So I'll assign him, say, to a guard post. So let's just build one of these, and the resource is now assigned, and we can trade with him and stuff. And we could also assign to shops. And now, my experience of even vanilla uh, unique NPCs is their shop inventory doesn't always show up right away. So possibly that will happen to this dude as well. So let's speak to him. Yeah, he's not showing up. Hopefully if we go somewhere else and reload the area, and if I went off you know, on my, on my adventures, then it would reload and he would uh, have his inventory. And also, if you're using Sim Settlements, if you have um, auto assign unique NPCs checked to on, then it will just pick up on this NPC and he'll be auto assigned to a house and to any jobs and things like that. Because really, we're just piggybacking onto the back of existing scripts and it just all works through the existing workshop parent script. So, thank you for watching. Hopefully, that was useful. Hopefully, that was clear. Uh, thank you for watching and goodbye. Ah!